Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod's IS classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to discuss current affairs of 11th August 2022. So first of all, I wish you a very happy Raksha Bandhan to all of you. So now let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is given by Abraham Lincoln. So according to him, whenever I hear anyone arguing for slavery, I feel a strong impulse to see it tried on him personally. So whenever any person who is arguing about slavery, actually this Abraham Lincoln, he personally feels that, yes, I have to try it on, it on him personally. So this quote is about slavery. So slavery is also one of the important problems that we are facing. So especially the people who are going from India to other countries like UAE, Dubai, etc. They, they are facing this slavery. And even their passports had been taken by the owners. Right. So here this slavery it is still prevalent in, in our society, especially in some, in some Arab countries. Yes, slavery it is still persistent. And some of the victims of the slavery will be like Indians. So now let us try to see important articles. So we are going to discuss eight topics and out of these eight topics. So I'm going to cover articles from Hindu, Indian Express and also some other sources. So first topic it is about G20. So this article is important from our international relations, which comes in our GS paper too. And this topic will be important from both mains and prelims. So from prelims, you can get some basic facts regarding this G20. And from the mains, you have to know about what are the concerns, what are the possible solutions and what are the issues that we are facing with this G20. So this topic is absolutely very relevant for our upcoming USC mains. So if you're talking about this G20, so author says that, this group, okay, group of this 20 countries, that is G20, plays a very important role in shaping and even strengthening the global architecture and governance on all major international economic issues. So what are the economic issues that we are facing due to this global pandemic, supply chain disruptions and economic slowdown, recession. So for all these things, GS, uh, this uh, G20 plays a very important role that will be shaping and as well as that will be strengthening on our global architecture as well. And even this G20 which recognizes global prosperity and here it recognizes this global past prosperity. It is one of the interdependent and economic opportunities and provides some challenges also. So what are the challenges are present? What are the economic opportunities are present? And these prosperity, they are interconnected with one another. So we are going to discuss what are the opportunities, what are the challenges and what are the possible solutions. So first of all, let us try to focus on this prelims related facts of this G20. Actually, this G20 is an informal group of 19 countries and also European Union, which also part of it. And it was founded in year 1999 okay with the representatives of international monetary fund and world bank so with the help of this imf and world bank they formed this g20 and members includes argentina australia brazil canada china france germany india indonesia italy japan republic of korea that is south korea mexico russia saudi arabia south africa turkey and uk and even us and european union so how to remember these countries yes you will be having this doubt right so you have to see from the continent wise here in the north north america we have canada us and mexico and the south america brazil and argentina and in this africa we have the south africa and australia we have australia okay and here from this euro part we have uk germany france and italy and here we have turkey and saudi arabia and here from this India and Southeast Asian part, we have Russia, China, India, Japan and South Korea and Indonesia. So in this way, if you see the continent wise, you can, you can easily remember these countries for sure. And it is my promise. Okay. And recently here, Nigeria, which meant to be this 20th member and also dropped at the last minute due to some political troubles at that time. And you have to remember that this Nigeria is not the part. Okay, and if you're talking about why it is in news, so recently our Ministry of External Affairs, that is MEA, in 190 meetings, so India will strengthen the international support for priorities 
of vital importance of developing countries so here our external affairs minister he said that so india plays a very important role especially in the strengthening of international support and even it is very much important for even developing countries as well so especially we are going to focus on social and economic sectors and that mainly ranges from energy agriculture trade digital economy health environment employment tourism corruption and as well as women empowerment so these are some important focus areas that we need to focus especially these are vulnerable and as well as disadvantaged areas so here in this uh, g20 so what are the collaborations and what are the uh, what are the collaborations that we can expect here so actually you know that so here international organizations for example wto for example who so they are losing their credibility right so here we can see there is a fractured world which makes trade is not well well connected and even there is no proper multilateralism we are seeing here so especially countries are focusing on their domestic policies and we are seeing there is increased sense of this protectionism as well okay but not this multilateralism so because of this here if you are talking about especially this multilateral commitments so when we are focusing on aid and trade or flattering they are decreasing and the governments in a world that is steadily becoming more equal needs international or institutional innovation so yes we, need, we are mainly focusing on this institutional innovations and here global aid that is helping the countries okay and the trade they are flattering day by day so why because of there is decreased role of united nations there is decreased role of who who etc and now we are focusing on just three a socio economic systems that are present for example we are focusing on g7 we are focusing on china russia and as well as india others okay so they are mainly focusing on this global agenda and if you are talking about russia ukraine issue it is like a long shadow and rival finance issue and it also having some impact on the trade value chains and energy security of the european countries and next one here is if you are talking about especially the primary role of this G20, so it accounts for 95% of this world's patents and 85% of this global GDP and 75% of international trade and 65% of world's population and they need to be reoriented to prevent the clash of ideas and that are especially detriment to the global good so here if you're talking about the importance or significance of this g20 so here it is accounting for about 95 percentage of this world's patent and 85 percentage of this global gdp and 75 percentage of international trade and 65 percentage of the world population so here we are here we need to focus on this g20 and we need to prevent the ideas which are detrimenting for this global good so if you're talking about common concerns regarding this g20 the first one here is presumed equality okay so here we need to focus on this climate change so here in this uh, climate change each and every country they need to play an important role to fight against this climate change okay so it's one of the important cause of concern and this one here is emerging economies they are no longer to be considered to be the source of problems okay and needing external solutions by the source of solutions to share problems so what happened if you are having a single problem it is not the problem of a single country but other countries they are also interconnected with that if you take the example of this russia ukraine crisis so because of this russia ukraine crisis it is also affecting the other countries regarding food security regarding energy security etc so whatever the problems that are arising so we need to come up with the shared solutions for that so and so problem and next one here is BRICS provides an appropriate model for the governance institutions and those institutions and those appropriate model that will be helpful for this 21st century where a narrow gap of states dominated by one power will not shape the agenda. Okay, so if you're talking about this BRICS which contains countries like Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa, they provide one alternate or appropriate model for these governance institutions and they are very much suitable for this 21st century. Okay, so here this type of institutions which are really dominated by few states, that is a narrow group of people should not dominate. So we need to come up with the revival of this type of this G20 grouping. And if you're talking about what might be the plausible solutions. So if you're talking about these possible solutions, the first one here is we need to focus on investment. We need to focus on science and technology, research and development, economic diversification, 
and we need to focus on sustainable urbanization so here whenever we are focusing on all these issues yes automatically we can fight against this uh, climate change right and next one here is we need to focus on digital information technology revolution so we can use this technology revolution and we can we can go for physical connectivity by sharing the specific opportunities available and this one here is the next frontier of finding solution to problem of natural resource management so we need to focus on even natural resource management like climate change related issues natural disasters and we need to support agriculture innovation to urban and infrastructure planning okay so next one here is yes we need to focus on this public health as well so due to this covid 19 pandemic now we need to focus on this public health especially some infectious diseases okay yes whenever if you if you if you are neglecting about this uh, rapidly infectious or rapidly transmitted diseases that will show an impact on the economy okay and next one here is even we can also come with the global financial transaction ta tax and actually this tax which mainly considered by the g20 in 2011 itself okay and we can also go for green technology fund for this least developed countries that such that we can also go for technology transfer money transfer such that they can fight against this climate change so this is about this topic in detail and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding new us bill on climate action so this topic is also important from your gs paper to under international relations and even from gs paper 3 under environment and ecology so this topic is important and this topic is important from your mains so there is no, nothing much like so this topic is important from prelims yes this topic is exclusively important from your mains so if you are talking about context it mainly says that on august 7th on august 7th us senate approved a bill and the title of this bill is inflation reduction act that is in simply ira inflation reduction act of 2022 and it passed or approved with a majority of 51 to 50 okay 51 said yes and 50 said no so this ir that is inflation reduction act which is uh, having a special focus on some areas for example like climate healthcare tax provisions and they are focusing to address inflation so as you all know there is increase in inflation in this usa inflation means nothing but there is increasing of price of goods and services in the market and if you are talking about some details regarding this bill so this bill which marks largest american investment they are focusing on investment and this investment which want to focus on clean energy and this investment includes like dollars 369 billion for this clean energy transition yes they want to fight against this climate change and they want to move towards this clean energy and this investment they are focusing on this clean energy transition and this bill which also provides a tax deduction that is reduction of tax to low and middle income households to go for electric especially for this low and middle income uh, households if they want to go for electric or okay, electric that means using of vehicles or using of instruments which are made up of electric or electronic goods so there will be also a provision of tax deduction and this bill also provides funding to benefit zero emission technologies for example they are focusing on decreasing of this greenhouse gas emissions and they are focusing on enhancing of climate resilience and they want to mitigate the risk from this extreme heat so because of uh, recent events of climate change that are happening in this us so they are forced to come up with this bill and this bill which mainly provides significant investment in renewable energy and they are focusing on heavy tax credits as well and it also imposes some fee on methane leak so whenever there is a methane leaks happening in this oil and as well as gas drilling yes there is a provision of imposing of fines so these are some important details regarding this bill and if you are talking about why does us want to invest in addressing of this climate change so what led to the push for this bill so here us currently which is facing some extreme some extreme climate change events for example it is experiencing heat waves and also it is experiencing this wild fires cyclones floods hurricanes etc okay it is experiencing or it is having the threats from this heat waves wild fires cyclones floods and hurricanes okay and they become very much frequent and as well as intense in the past few years and ongoing floods 
uh, which are happening in this US that led to heavy rainfall and also wildfires in California and even lightning that have become the major cause of concerns for these countries and because of this they mainly pushed US to come up with this type of bill to address these extreme weather events and to decrease this climate change. So if you're talking about not only US but also other countries they also have this type of similar laws. For example, in May 2022, Japan also came up with investment that is called as Invest in Kishida. So it is a plan for investing dollar 1.1 trillion investment, okay, especially in this clean energy. And not only this, but also European Union also proposed this similar, okay, similar, similar investment to reduce this emissions by 55 percentage and the target year is 2030 right so this is about this topic and now let us move on to next topic it is about to boost spending center releases rupees 1.16 lakh crore to states so here we have to know about what is the devolution of taxes so this topic is important from your gs paper to under polity and even gs paper 3 and gs paper 2 we have a chapter now lakshmika that is central state relations so in that central state relations you need to refer financial relations between central and as well as state so that will be very important and if you're talking about this devolution of taxes we need to know about what is horizontal devolution and what is this vertical devolution so let me know what is a horizontal devolution what is a vertical devolution so if you don't know about what is horizontal and vertical devolution so please let me know in the comment box so that in the tomorrow's lecture we are going to discuss about this horizontal and vertical devolution in our topic of the day okay so now let us try to see context why it is in use so central government released about rupees 1.16 lakh crore okay central government released rupees 1.16 lakh crore to the states and it is equivalent to two monthly installments of tax devolution and they are focusing on capital spending so what is this capex or capital spending so capital spending means nothing but if they are going for laying of roads or building of dams or building of uh, hospitals and as well as schools etc so that will lead to the creation of infrastructure so such kind of spending is called as capital infrastructure so, or capital spending so if you're talking about details it mainly says that article 280 of indian constitution which mainly mandates finance commission to make recommendations about distribution of this net proceeds of taxes between union and states okay and it mainly says that between center and states whenever there is a tax devolution is happening that is called as vertical devolution so between the states from one state to another state whenever they are uh, also talking about that is called as horizontal devolution so here which article talks about this taxes devolution that is article 280 of indian constitution so it might be an important question for your prelims so article 280 of indian constitution which mandate each finance commission to make recommendations about the distribution of net proceeds of taxes between union and as well as states and also among the states that is called as horizontal devolution so if you i think uh, i hope you might be knowing about where from where states you are getting revenue from the center so if you are talking about so in which in which terms here states are going to get revenue from the center for example first one is devolution as i said okay so here that under this devolution of taxes as states they share taxes from this gross tax revenue that will comes under the states okay so central will be giving the states money under this devolution of taxes and this one is here is scheme related transfer so whenever any central sponsored schemes are announced by the government means so there will be share from the center and the states right so from the centers here states they are going to get money under this uh, centrally sponsored scheme next one is finance commission grants so there is also a transfer to the states from the transfers uh, expenditure and other expenses so they are mainly based on the budgetary allocations and next one here is other transfers like other grants or loans so under this also states are going to get revenue from the center so as per 15th finance commission recommendations here the divisible pool of tax here is 41 percentage you have to remember this and on what basis here 41 percentage of this is given to the states 
for example based on area based on the forest and ecology demographic performance and tax efforts so based on this here stage you are going to get the tax evolution from the center so this is called as vertical devolution so now let us try to see next topic it is a very interesting topic that is remains of canon so this image you can see on the screen that is called as canon so remains of canon found in kerala's thali paraba okay thali paramba so in this area so here there is the remains of this canon was found and why it is important because it belongs to this tipu sultan period so this article is important from your gs paper 1 under history so i want to give you one question so what are the contributions of this tipu sultan so let me know in the comment box so this topic is at most important and you can get a mains question from this topic for sure so if you see context it mainly says that a kenan a barrel which probably during this tipu sultan's time it was found in this private property okay in kerala so because of this this is a news so this iron barrel which was found protruding from the earth was discovered while bushes were being cleared in the property so whenever they were going for the clearing of bushes yes they found this uh, iron barrel so kenan is believed to be the part of remains which are belongs to the period of this tipu sultan so actually here why we are saying that this is the period of uh, this is belongs to this period of tipu sultan because the remains of this tipu sultan fort and earlier had been discovered okay in the approaches of this kuppam river which is present uh, very nearby so because of this so there are some ex, uh, some expeditions like so this is also belongs to this uh, tipu sultan period so discovery has infused interest among the people and there is a strong demand to excavate the area with the help of archaeological survey of india okay so here because of this here people they had a good interest and they are demanding that they need to excavate this region with the help of this archaeological survey of india so don't forget about the homework so you have to let me know what are the contribution of this tip sultan so now let us try to see next topic is regarding india australia to sign film treaty so this article is also one of the interesting thing i can say so till now we discussed about the trade some political regions political areas and we discussed about uh, some for example military exercises but for the first time we have this film treaty between india and australia so this topic is also important from your gs paper to under international relations so now let us try to see why it is in news so union cabinet approved signing of this audio visual co production treaty between india and australia so we also have this now from now onwards we can also add this point that is india and australia they have audio visual co production treaty so i think uh, you might have uh, saw this movie orange right so in that orange there will be one song that is sydney nagaram so sydney it is located in this australia itself so you can remember like that okay so india and australia so we had signed this audio visual co production treaty which is regarding our film okay film so here actually this uh, agreement or, or this audio visual co production treaty which also helpful in facilitating this joint production of films so now onwards we can go for production of films jointly with this australia and india so now let us try to see some details so audio visual co production treaties they are enabling documents and these are documents which facilitate co production of films between these two count two countries so we are talking about what is significance what we are going to get so here if because of this agreement yes private now and quasi government and governmental agencies they enter into contracts to produce the films together and the proposed agreement will also helps to boost ties between india and australia and we can also focus on exchanging of art and culture and it also showcase a soft power of our country and further that will also leads to increasing of employment so it is a very important now and here we can also uh, get some technology regarding film editing etc right so we can also go for uh, production and as well as the co production etc so here the use of indian locations that will also increase the prospects of the country which is also preferred film shooting destinations so whenever we are coming up with this type of uh, agreements yes we can also attract this uh, uh, film shooting destination and even that will helpful to get or inflow of this foreign currency as well so this is about this topic and here we have this india okay and here we have this australia so this is the location of india and australia so this is about this topic and i want to make a small announcement today it is a last today it is a last for registration of this mains answer writing practice course and in this course we are providing one year detail plan 
along with the micro listing of topics and we will be giving you weekly targets so based on that weekly targets daily one question will be given and that question will be updated in our website at 10 o'clock so that you are going to write answer and if you send that answer to our uh, mail so there will be evaluation and we will be giving you detailed feedback and also model answer for you and especially we are going to have live classes on every sunday from 7 pm to 9 pm regarding these questions that are given in that week so that that will be helpful revision and you will be getting more points and it will be helpful to how to improve your presentation as well so try to join this course and this course is absolutely very beneficial and the details of this course is given in description box and if you have any doubts so please call me on this number 8074765513 and if you want to purchase the course, you can visit our website rathorsciencecademy.com and there you have to register with your email ID and you can click on the courses and you can see wide range of courses that we are offering in our Rathor Science Academy and you can go for the filling of details and payment there itself. Okay, if you have any doubts, so please call me on this number. And now let us try to see some more important articles that appeared in other sources as well. Title says, experts explain what it will take to fulfill India's solar power dream. So this article which is talking about solar power dream of India. So this article which is focusing on India's uh, commitments regarding this renewable energy and India's push towards the solar energy. So this topic is important from your GS paper 3 under environment and ecology. So now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail and let us try to see why it is in news first of all. So if you are talking about why it is in news, so here actually in 2010, so what was the target? So the target was just 10 megawatts, 10 megawatts of power that to be generated from this photovoltaic cells that is PV capacity that is present in India. Okay, And now in 2022, it increased to 50 megawatts. So we are mainly pushing towards, okay, we are mainly pushing towards cleaner energy generation technologies and recently we also updated our NDCs that is nationally determined contributions to fight against this climate change correct okay so India it is also aiming for 280 gigawatts of renewable energy so out of that we are going to produce about 500 gigawatts by 2030 that is from our solar that is solar PV panels that is photovoltaic cells and here we are also going to have some energy that we are going to generate from this wind etc. Okay, so here when we want to achieve this 500 gigawatts of solar energy, yes we need to focus on especially building of our solar capacity. But here we are facing some obstacles okay to come up with this photovoltaic or uh, solar energy. So we are going to see that. So if we are talking about some facts regarding this photovoltaic materials, so these are the devices that mainly convert. So we are trapping this sunlight, right? So this sunlight will be converted into electric energy. So this is done by this photovoltaic materials. So when you are having a single photovoltaic device, so which is known as a cell. So this cell which is made up of different semiconductors, okay? So it contains some materials like silicon. Silicon is one of the best semiconductor material. And if you are having, uh, when we want to increase outputs, yes, we need to increase this, uh, increase this, so uh, this semiconductor metal that is silicon. So these modules, they can be individually or in groups. They are mainly going to form an arrays. And as part of this photovoltaic system, so one or more arrays, they are then connected to the grid. So in this solar system, what happens? So we will be using this photovoltaic cells and they will be conducting semiconductors right so here we are mainly clubbing so many many photovoltaic cells together and we are forming an array and they are connected to this grid okay so if you're talking about the current capacity of the solar module manufacturing in india that is just 15 gigawatts per year so what are the challenges that we are facing so first one here is we are especially focusing on or we are highly dependent on the imports Okay, Indian companies, they rely on the imports. Okay, for example, here photovoltaic cells and there is no proper solar wafers. Solar wafers that we are getting 90% of this wafers from this China itself. Okay, so because of this, it is one of the important challenge. So whenever there is, uh, there is no proper imports means yes, it will be affecting our solar energy. 
needs and when here is there is also uncompetitiveness in the technology and the cost so if you're talking about this photovoltaic cell technology so most manufacturing technologies in india they can provide efficiency up to just 18 to 90 percentage of the cell okay so it is only so uh, this is why only 3 to 4 gigawatts of this 15 gigawatts of module manufacturing capacity technology that is competitive and suitable for the grid based projects so but we are not much competitive regarding that and next one here is there is poor raw material supply so silicon wafers that you are getting from this china so sometimes it will be becoming more expensive and it is also not manufacturing in india so because of this here the poor raw material supply will also affect this ambitious goal of the solar power energy so if you're talking about what is the way forward what can be done so india is more of an assembly hub than compared to that of this manufacturing hub so here we need to focus on this manufacturing of this units such that we can we can decrease the price and even we can increase the quality of the cells and the modules so this is the first important thing and this one here is when you want to go for setting up of the solar uh, solar power okay modules yes we need land so here uh, when we want to go for land so here it is a, one of the most expensive component whenever you are going for this land uh, land ceiling okay so whenever you are going to get this land especially for the rent so it will be like a very costly so this is also one cause of concern and to make right grade of silicon for the solar manufacturing so india will need to collaborate on technology yes we need to get good technology and we need to focus on this research and development and india has to make a few investments with high quality and we need to focus on high uh, technology centers okay and especially we need to get some assistance from the other countries which are doing some excellent in these technologies okay and next one here is even in academics and industry also we need to collaborate and we need to come up with the state of art manufacturing and we need to focus on the testing facilities as well okay so in this way here we can move forward in this race so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding vasculitis so the autoimmune inflammation of blood vessels that let this ashton kutcher unable to see or hear so this is a person actually so this person he is a very important person because actually uh, actually this person who is mainly uh, facing this vasculitis and here this ashton kutchler had a weird super rare form of this uh, vasculitis and two years ago he knocked out with the no proper vision and no proper hearing because of this uh, because of this vasculitis so we're talking about these details so if you're talking about this vasculitis so what are the signs and symptoms that we can see if you're talking about eye so in the eye also what happened so that will leads to reduced visibility vasculitis means simply so blood vessels are there so the inflammation of this blood vessels which happens and the nose will start bleeding and the lungs uh, will uh, also have some impact like we can if you're coughing you will be getting blood as put him next one his kidneys also we can see the glomerular nephritis and muscle aches and general symptoms like fever headache weight loss will be there and the skin will also becomes very loose and the joint pains and arthritis will be seen here and the joint digestive system here blood uh, stools that means uh, when you, whenever you are passing the stool in that stool you can see the blood will be there and heart you can also experience myocardial infarction that is MMI hypertension and in the nervous system you can also get the stroke so these are some signs and symptoms of this vasculitis so vasculitis is nothing but in simple language so i can say if we, if it is a blood vessel so there is inflammation that is seen on the blood vessel that is called as vasculitis okay so inflammation is a natural process that mainly happens in our body so if at all any any uh, antibody or so for example if there is any antigen which come into our body so our immune system will be detecting that and it will be releasing antibodies so the same way in this autoimmune disorder so autoimmune is nothing but our body cells they are recognized as antigens okay so in this autoimmune disorder so it is a, one of the common thing that we can see that is vasculitis there is inflammation of blood vessels so in vasculitis here body immune system turns on healthy blood vessels and causing them swells up and narrowing down so because of this it will be like a very important uh, very uh, uh, we can see like many infections and even uh, many allergic reactions that we can see in our body so vasculitis can be only a minor problem affecting the skin or it can be like a serious uh, condition in this serious condition it will affect the important and vital organs in our body like heart lungs kidneys etc 
so there are around 20 this different disorders are classified under this vas vasculitis for example angulitis and arteritis they are used as a synonyms for this vasculitis so this is about this topic and this is important from your science and technology and now let's try to see next topic is regarding india u.s joint special forces exercise so this article is important from your international relations which comes under your gs paper too so now let's try to see why it is in news so 13th edition of india u.s joint special forces exercise the exercise name here is exercise vajra prahar 2022 commenced so because of this is in news and you can see question like so vajra prahar is seen in news it is between india and us so if you're talking about details so this vajra prahar series it is a series of joint exercise and this exercise which aims to share best practices and experiences in the areas such as joint mission planning, operational tactics, and they are also focusing on improving interoperability between the special forces of both the nations. An annual exercise which hosted alternatively between India and US. So if you are talking about the prelims practice questions today, the first question is appearing this 2020. So President of India can summon a session of the parliament at such place where he or she thinks fit, yes. So, Constitution of India provides for three sessions of parliament in a year, but it is not mandatory to conduct all the sessions. It is not the thing. And next one here is there is no minimum number of days that parliament required to meet in India in year. Yes. So, that option will be 1 and 3. That is option C is correct answer. And next one here it is regarding PESA Act. So, PESA Act in 1996, which are one of the following is identified as its objective. So, first one is to provide self governance second one is to recognize the traditional rights and the third one here is to create autonomous regions in the tribal areas and fourth one is to free tribal people from exploitation. So, that option is C, okay, to create autonomous regions in these tribal regions. And now, let's try to discuss the topic of the day. So, topic of the day it is about wildlife sanctuary, uh, national parks and as well as biosphere reserve. So here we have to know about what is the difference between these three. So this will be important from your prelims. So your wildlife sanctuary means the area which is free from disturbances from human activities. And actually this wildlife sanctuary which is mainly focusing on conservation and as well as protection of wild animals. And this one here is national parks or those they are nothing but reserved areas. So in this areas also human activity will be allowed but should be very very less. And we are focusing on protection of animals here. And this one is biosphere reserves. So biosphere reserve, it is an area of land or water that is protected by law in order to support the conservation of ecosystems. So it is about biosphere reserve. And if you're talking about this wildlife sanctuary, they comes under the jurisdiction of state government and national parks comes under the jurisdiction of central government and biosphere reserves are protected by UNESCO. So this is one important films fact. And if you are talking about examples of this wildlife sanctuary, for example, Moodu Malai Wildlife Sanctuary in Tamil Nadu. And we have uh, Kaziranga National Park in Assam. And Biosphere Reserve, for example, Nilagiri Biosphere Reserve. So if you are talking about the Biosphere Reserve, yes, we have the core zone. In that core zone, there will be no human activity. And we have a buffer zone. Buffer zone can be helpful for the tourism, grazing of animals, etc. And we have transition zone. So in this transition zone, we can see there will be allowing for this uh, a human settlements, crop cultivation, etc. Okay, so this is the structure of this biosphere reserve. And if you see the vocabulary part of today, so nudge means prod, prod someone gently, that means having the touch with the gently and one's elbow in order to attract the attention. So we want to attract the attention, that is called as nudge. Next one is endemic. Endemic means that is regularly found among the particular people or in a certain area. And this one is to facilitate. So facilitate means to make easy or e easier. Okay, so this is about this vocabulary part. And these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper and even some other important newspapers. So by this, I'm concluding with these articles. And now let us try to focus on today's Hindu newspaper PDF. Okay, so this is our today's Hindu. And here the first article here, it is regarding the tax devolution. So regarding this tax devolution, I discussed this topic in detail, right? So here you have to focus on what is this horizontal devolution and what is this vertical devolution. So this is very important from your polity point of view. And if you move forward here in the city page here, you can see 17% of rise in crimes against women in the city. Against women in the city shows the police data. So police data says that yes, there is increasing of violence against women. 
so here if you are from delhi yes you have to know about this data for sure so delhi recalled about 17 percentage of rise in these crimes against women in the first seven and a half months in this year when we are compared to the last year so there is increase in number of crimes against women okay it's according to delhi police data so average an average of six cases of rape and eight cases of uh, assault on women they were reported every day every day about six cases of rape and eight cases of uh, I saw that is seen here. So you have to think about what is the human empowerment that we are thinking about as an UPSC aspirant, right? So if you move forward, so in this uh, page number four also there is nothing much important. You can leave this page simply. And here you can see one more important and interesting article here. From the glorious Himalayas to the quaint backwaters, from shimmering palaces to the untouched lands of the east. So Taj proudly celebrates Asadi Kamrut Mahotsav. So this is a very, very good quote and uh, please try to make a quote of this. Uh, make a note of this quote in this you can use whenever you are writing your answers and from in your even essays also. So from the glorious Himalayas to the quaint back backwaters, from the simmering palaces to the untouched lands of the east, Taj, Taj proudly celebrates Asadi Kahamrit Mahot. So, so you can use this type of quotes especially in your essays and your answers. So in this page number 6, there is one article that is regarding this canon of Tipu Sultan's period. So I discussed the topic and in the seventh page here you can see stolen Chola era Buddha idol stuck in US. So actually here during this Chola period, so Chola era Buddha idol, it was reportedly stolen from this uh, Arpakam near Kanchipuram is now stuck in this Department of Homeland Security in the US. Okay, so here we have to know about Antiquities Act. So already we discussed that topic number of times. So now let us move forward. And in this editorial page, there is an article regarding this COVID-19. So already we discussed number of times. So that uh, because of that, I didn't take this article for the today's discussion. And um, most of these articles in this editorial page are political articles. And I discussed about this G20 topic. And if you move forward in this text and context, I discussed about this US bill on climate change. And here you have to focus on this electricity bill 2022. So if you see the gist of this topic, so what is this uh, bill which is talking about? So, Union Power Minister, he, in, he introduced this electric, Electricity Amendment Bill 2022 in the Lok Sabha. And this bill which opposed by the farmers groups as they fear that this bill will lead to stopping subsidies. That power distribution will either be under the control of private companies. So, there is a fear in the farmers that they are not going to get the subsidies. And one of the main changes of this bill, it is proposal for the central intervention in the area of power distribution and the domains will come under the state government. So this is about this. There is nothing much need to remember under this topic. And if you move forward, here you can see aviation safety regulator opens the door for this transgender pilots. So here what happened? First of all, this pilot, he not given the license because he is a transgender and finally he got the license and now here DGC formulates a medical guidance a medical guidelines for this uh, person to obtain the license and if you move forward here you can see credibility of United Nations sanctions regime at all time low so this topic is very important uh, because we need to focus on this United Nations whenever United Nations is seen in news yes that will be important so I hope you can see now with the clarity right so here the credibility of United Nations sanctions regime it is, it is at all time low. So India said on Tuesday and India which mainly says that China, Pakistan, Afghanistan, United Nations Secretariat over the selectivity and double standards against terrorism. So we are focusing on especially on the terrorism. Okay, so there is India expressed that there is a deep disappointment with this United Nations Security Council sanctions against this Al-Qaeda and as well as the Islamic State. Okay, and actually it was the first to put into place in the late 1990s and recently we updated as a part of global war on terrorism. If you move forward, in this page number 13 also there is nothing much important and this page number 14 you can see Corbevax. So Corbevax get not as precaution dose. So here the UN government approved this biological ease Corbevax as a precaution dose against COVID-19 for, for those who above 18 years of age 
and who are fully vaccinated with either Covishield or Covaxin. Okay, so this is about this topic and if you move forward, I discussed about this India-Australia film treaty and there is one article that is regarding this government enable extends this Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban Okay, Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana Urban to December 31st, 2024. So you have to know about some details regarding these schemes and let me know some facts regarding these schemes in the comment box. And the world page also there is nothing much important and in this business page there is one article important that is RBI targets unfair methods in digital lending with new norms. So these are some important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. So by this I am concluding. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So if you are new to this Rathor's IS Academy channel so try to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that whenever we are posting video you will be getting notifications. And if you want to get the PDF of this class, you can join the Telegram channel. Link is given in the description box. So by this I am concluding. Thank you so much and have a nice day.